Ted Kaczynski, what do you know about him? Um, went to Harvard. He dropped out. I don't think he graduated. He graduated. Lived in a cabin in the woods. He did live in a cabin. Okay, he graduated. Um, big in the postal industry. <laughs> very big, very big. Delivers more packages than uh, than I do. Yep, very big into postal service. Yep. That's all I know. Okay. All right, yep. So pretty much everything you said was correct. Except for the male guy. Yeah. On May 25th, 1978, at Northwestern University, Professor Buckley Christ was given a package with his name on the return address. Buckley, not recognizing the package, called security to have it opened. Upon opening the package, a bomb went off that injured the security officer, Terry Maker's hand. Luckily, the bomb was small and didn't severely injure Terry. The investigation led to nothing, and it was soon forgotten about. Almost a year later, on May 9th, 1978, John Harris, a graduate student at Northwestern University, opens a small package on his desk, causing a small bomb to go off which injures his hand. No forensics was found and nothing came of the investigation. A few months later, on November 15, 1979, a bomb goes off in the cargo hold of American Airlines Flight 444, filling the cabin with smoke. They safely land and the bomb is found. Luckily, the bomb didn't fully work and nobody was severely injured. Realizing that they may have a serial bomber targeting the public, the FBI creates a task force made up of members from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, the AATF, and the U.S. Postal Inspection Service. They call this task force Unibom. Unfortunately, this task force has no leads because of the care the bomber took. Over the next seven years, eight bombings occurred, injuring many people and killing one. Each bomb left no clues that led anywhere until February 20th, 1987. In Salt Lake City, Utah, a woman working at a computer store sees a man placing something in front of the store. He stands up and notices her. Then he quickly flees. The woman pays it no mind until the bomb goes off after being kicked by Gary Wright, severely injuring him. Fortunately, oh, yeah. Bro just saw a box and kicked it. I would probably do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I would too. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even be mad at him. Fortunately, he survives, and with the woman having been able to see the man's face, one of the most infamous criminal sketches is created. The Unabomber now has a face, which is the first major break in the case, but ultimately turns up nothing, and the Unabomber ceases his work for five years, until he starts again in 1993. Over the next two years, he sends out four bombs, which injures two and kills two. But once again, the Unabomber leaves no evidence, and the sketch turns up nothing. And that's all I have for this Is that the one with the hood and the sunglasses? Yes. Is that the famous guest you're talking about? Yes. <clears throat> it's a good sketch. That's all. That's it's a all. great. It's a great sketch. Ooh. Favorite sketch of all yeah, time. Yeah, Instagram all the time. Top five. I think that's gonna be. I want. I want to have like my Halloween costume. Be like the Unabomber. <laughs> I think that'd really do. I think it'd be really good. Could you imagine showing up to, like, one of our friends' fucking Halloween parties just wearing a sweatshirt and um, sunglasses? With a wooden like, box. Oh. Oh. <laughs> out. oh, who are you supposed to be? Oh, I'm the Unabomber. <laughs> Someone kicked this box. <laughs> yeah. In June 1995, the Unabomber sent a 35,000-word manifesto to the New York Times, Washington Post, and other newsletters demanding it to be posted to the public. The manifesto explains his hatred towards an advancing technological society. The FBI allows it to be published with hopes that the public could help identify the individual. Yeah, it was spot on. And people agree with him. What he's saying isn't wrong. Who, Ted or the FBI? Ted. Yeah. Especially like the whole fucking electric cars thing. I think he touched on the electric cars and the use of uh, like lithium batteries. Yeah, something that I saw and that how everybody, they're not recyclable. Something that everybody agreed on was how spot on he was. You know, they said obviously he's a piece yeah. of shit and he did terrible things, but he was very spot on in his manifesto. Yeah. So. He's a he like he's super radical, but like you can't recycle lithium batteries so you throw them in a fucking uh whatever it's called 
What's it um, called? The big hole where you throw garbage? A pit? Dump a mine? Thing. Dump pit? I don't know. Dude. A fire? They're all over America. Uh, no, they're all over America. No, I'm not talking about your fucking bedroom. <laughs> my bedroom, my bedroom does not stink, bro. Dude, your fucking look at your fucking bedroom. Is that a fucking Chinese fuck? Is that a fucking Chinese box behind you? Yeah. Yeah. Look at my how clean. I my just bedroom. got this. Look at that. Look at this. No one does. Anyways. This would prove to be the Unabomber's biggest mistake because in 1996, a letter was sent to the tip line by David Kaczynski, and it described how the writer of the manifesto shared many similarities with his brother Ted. Ted Kaczynski was a very intelligent person, having scored a 167 on an IQ test which categorized him as a genius. Ted was also a very isolated man, never truly fitting into society, so much so that in 1971 he moved to Lincoln, Montana and lived in a 10 foot by 14 foot cabin he built by himself. But society was ruining the peaceful isolated nature he created for himself, which caused him to grow a deep hatred towards society and his technology. Do you think, uh, did Ted Kaczynski get bitches? Yes. Yeah, I think he did. On April 3rd, 1996, the FBI arrested Ted Kaczynski and investigated his cabin in Lincoln, Montana. In the cabin, they found another bomb ready to be mailed, a surplus of bomb components, and notes describing his work. Yay. Okay. Javinsky stood Good trial job, in... FBI. Kaczynski stood trial in 1998. He was sentenced to four life terms, which he carried out until his death from suicide in 2023. The end. He did not kill himself. Yes, he did. No, he didn't. He died of old age. No, he didn't. He died. He died. He died of suicide. No, he attempted to kill himself when he no, first got arrested. He hung himself. They found him. What? With a rope around his neck. Bro he hung himself. Bro is devastated. Damn it! He was like 80. I love him. How did he fucking hang himself? Hey, well, he... I don't know. Because he's all... That's what I was thinking about last night. I was literally falling asleep. And I'm like, how the fuck did he hang himself? He was in a max maximum security prison. Where did he get a rope from? You're telling me he spent 30 years in jail. And after 30 years, he was like, all right, now I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> yes. Look it yeah, up. They killed him. What do you think Ted Kaczynski would say if he saw, like, our TikToks now and stuff? Like, you know, like, yeah, and Skibbity Toilet. That's, dude, that's probably why That's probably why he fucking killed himself. <laughs> he saw a video of Skibbity Toilet. They gave him, they gave him, like, an hour of phone time. And he saw, like, what the world has come to. And he's like, fuck, dude. Fuck. They didn't listen. It's he kind of became like a weird trend. Ted, he was like he was blowing up on social media, and the one thing he was against was social media. Yeah, kind like totally ironic. fucking, yeah. Kind of set his like life's work uh, of blowing up people. No, yeah. so and he made up the and he made the internet blow up. Oh, 